Stalin and the Scientists, A History of Triumph and Tragedy 1905–1953 is a 2016 popular science nonfiction book on the history of science in the Soviet Union under Joseph Stalin by English novelist and science writer, Simon Ings. It is Ings' second nonfiction book, the first being The Eye, A Natural History 2007. He had previously published eight novels. Stalin and the Scientists was longlisted for the 2016 Bailey Gifford Prize for Nonfiction. Topic: <inaudible> Background. Ing's inspiration for Stalin and the Scientists came from Soviet psychologist Alexander Luria's book Mind of a Nemanist, about the life of Russian journalist and nemanist Solomon Cherishevsky. Ings said in 2016 interviews that Luria is often referred to as the founder of modern neuroanatomy and the godfather of the literary genre we call popular science. Luria's account more or less set the template for modern popular science and pretty much set me on the path I'm on now. Ings had considered writing a biography about Luria, but felt that while Luria's achievements were extraordinary, Considering the climate of political repression he worked in, Ings was concerned that Western readers would consider his career too ordinary, and would miss the context in which it unfolded. Ings' passion for popular science and the need to explain the context within which Luria and other Soviet scientists worked, changed what would have been a one-year, modest biography, into a five-year behemoth, that burned through three editors, and, Ings added, nearly killed me. Ings said, as a novelist, he was absurdly underqualified to tackle a book like Stalin and the Scientists, but added that only a novelist could be so ridiculously ambitious and naive enough to stick his or her neck out so far. Ings felt that given the kind of science prevalent in Russia at the time, perhaps this really has to be the job of a novelist rather than a historian. Responding to statements that this is the first history. Of Soviet science, Ings said, certainly no one's been foolish enough to attempt to tell the whole story of science under Stalin in a single volume, but be assured I didn't dig this entire thing single-handed from virgin ground. <laughs> Topic. Table of contents Preface Prologue, Fuses Part 1, Control, 1905 to 1929. Scholars, revolutionaries, entrepreneurs, workers, exploring the mind, understanding evolution, shaping humanity. Part 2, Power, 1929 to 1941. Storming the fortress of science. Eccentrics. The primacy of practice. Cooper Talker, The Great Patron, Fascist Links, Office Politics, We Shall Go to the Pyre, Part 3, Dominion, 1941 to 1953, Lucky Stiffs, Can I Go to the Reactor, How Did Anyone Dare Insult Comrade Lysenko, Higher Nervous Activity the death agony was horrible. Succession Epilogue, spoil Topic. Synopsis Topic. Reception In a review in The Guardian, David Holloway described Stalin and the scientists as a fascinating story that reveals the tragedy and the triumph of Soviet science. He called it a lively book and complimented Ings on his clear and simple scientific explanations and the way he highlighted the personalities of those involved, the brilliant scientists, the charlatans, the visionaries, and the careerists. A reviewer of the book in Publishers Weekly complimented Ings on the sensitive way in which he exposed the lives of the scientists and their experiences, and how he ably documents the challenges, failures, and achievements of Soviet science. The reviewer commented that while Ings can be long-winded 
He engagingly fuses history, science, and storytelling. British historian and author Simon Sabag Montefiore wrote in the New York Times that Ings skillfully portrays the lives of the scientists of this period. He called Ings an entertaining storyteller who often captures the essence of things, and described the book as lively and interesting, and full of priceless nuggets and a cast of frauds, crackpots and tyrants. Montefiore added, however, that while Ings highlights the failures of Soviet science, he omits its successes, for example the Tupolev and MiG airplanes, and the T-34 tank. Montefiore was also critical of errors in the book, for example Stalin's birthday and Felix Dzerzhinsky's tenure as head of Cheka, the Soviet secret police. Writing in Socialist Review, John Parrington was also critical of flaws and omissions. While he described the book as ambitious in scope and called it fascinating and important, Parrington said it is not without elementary errors, like Ng's statement that the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks missed the 1905 revolution. Parrington also complained that Ings does not explain what it was that destroyed the hopes and dreams of Russian scientists in the 1920s when Stalin came to power. American science historian Lauren Graham also criticized errors and omissions in the book. In a review in the Wall Street Journal, he said Ings is a gifted writer and called Stalin and the scientists a good single source for readers new to Soviet science. But Graham felt that one of the book's shortcomings was that Ings only focuses on topics that interest him, like biology, physiology and psychology, while giving little attention to mathematics and theoretical physics. Graham also noted several incorrect or exaggerated statements in the book, for example, Alexei Gastev was a leading architect of Russia's industrialization program. Nikolai Bernstein invented cybernetics, and Stalin was the last in a long line of European philosopher kings. Graham concluded that the book is the result of an impressive amount of study and deserves attention, but a very critical form of attention.